our family of five set out on a 23-day road trip. We saw some historic sculptures, panned for gold, went to an actual rodeo, saw our first moose, witnessed so many of God's glorious colors, hiked to an alpine lake, found the coolest gum wall, saw the Goonies house, went to an actual shipwreck, found Haystack Rock, hiked to a lighthouse, saw a tree bigger than our RV, found a beach full of glass, spent the night right by the ocean, crossed the Golden Gate Bridge, toured Alcatraz, explored El Capitan, found some natural hot springs and were surrounded by donkeys, walked on nothing but salt that went on for miles and miles, crushed Utah Olympic Park, toured the Stanley, saw Red Rock Amphitheater, and made it back in one piece. Join us on our epic family adventure out west. We will show you exactly what we did, share our itinerary, where we stayed the night, and how to make the most out of each location. Come with us on our trip of a lifetime. Welcome to VO's Travel. Where to go and what to see. With kids. <laughs> We started out by flying from Indiana to Denver, Colorado. There we rented an RV and headed north, where we stopped at Wind Cave National Park, Crazy Horse, and Mount Rushmore. Then we headed over to Devil's Tower, Yellowstone, up to Glacier National Park, over to Seattle, down the Oregon coast, saw the redwoods in Northern California, and then down to San Francisco. Then over to Yosemite, and down to Spencer Hot Springs in the middle of the Nevada desert. Next was Salt Lake and Park City, and finally back to Denver, Colorado, where we flew back home. We rented our RV through a host from Outdoorsy named Shelly. She was the best. If you'd like her contact info, we will be glad to share it. I do look forward to making some more RV videos, so if you have any questions about renting an RV, please comment them below and I'll be sure to answer them. We left Denver, Colorado, picked up some groceries, and headed 169 miles to Cabela's in Sydney, Nebraska, where they have their own campground. It was the perfect place to stay for our first night because we could pick up any supplies that we did not already have. There's also a Walmart in town for any other things that you may need. We paid $40 for the night and it was a first come first serve lot, so get there before 4 p.m. The next morning we headed to South Dakota where we stopped at Wind Cave National Park first. We got there about noon and saw our first bison. It was so cool. We did not do a full cave tour because we had other places to go that day, but we did stop and see the opening to the cave. We left Wind Cave around 1 p.m. and had a 45 minute drive to Crazy Horse. We stayed there about one hour and had time to watch some tribal dancing. Just one side note, I did make individual videos about each of these places that we stopped along the whole road trip. I will place those in the cards above, so make sure you look for those links if you're interested more about any location. Next, we were headed to Mount Rushmore and it was only about a half hour drive. We hung out for maybe one hour and did the presidential trail hike that took about a half hour. Next, we drove the 15 minutes to Keystone, South Dakota, where we had dinner and then went to Big Thunder Gold Mine where we did a tour. That was really great and I highly recommend it. We also panned for gold and that was lots of fun. Another note, in the separate videos about each location, I do provide more specific details like addresses and costs of different items that we did. So once again, make sure you check the cards for the specific videos about each exact location that we did if you're interested in more details. Around 7.30 p.m., we drove 15 minutes back to Mount Rushmore for their lighting ceremony that they held at 9 o'clock every single night. That was well worth it, and we are so glad that we went back. That night, we stayed at Kemp's Camp. They had all the hookups, and it was $48 for the night. The next morning, we drove 100 miles to Devil's Tower in Wyoming. We arrived around 10.30 a.m. and that gave us time to do the hike around Devil's Tower, which is called the Devil's Tower Trail. We also had time to stop in the gift shop to get stamps for a national passport book. If you're not aware of those passport books, I did a video that explains it. After stopping at this special location for a picnic, we left Devil's Tower at noon and headed to Cody, Wyoming. It was a 300 mile drive and took us about five hours. We did get to Cody just in time for their street shootout and you should too. The street shootout show lasted for a half hour and then we headed over to the Cody Night Rodeo that started at 8 p.m. Gates opened at 7 though, so get there early. After the rodeo, we headed to Buffalo Bill State Park where we stayed the night in their North Fork campground. Look at that scenery. It was $48 for the night and we had electric hookup. There was a sewage dump on site. The next morning, we drove 90 miles to the northeast entrance of Yellowstone National Park. It took a little over two hours though because there were a lot of switchbacks, but the scenery was breathtaking. That drive had me a little on edge, but it was worth it. We got to Yellowstone around noon and entered through the northeast entrance like I said earlier. And right when we got in, we saw... Our first moose. Look, you see it? We chose going in that entrance because it took us through Lamar Valley where we also saw a bear. We stopped for a quick picnic and then onto Mammoth Hot Springs. Next, we walked the Porcelain Basin and then over to the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Really pretty. 
After that, it was time to head to our campsite where we stayed at Canyon Campground in Yellowstone. It was $38 with no hookups. Just make sure you book this campsite six months in advance. The next morning, we got up and walked through Barrel Spring on our way to Old Faithful. Just a reminder, in my Yellowstone video, I do go into very specific details about our itinerary at Yellowstone. I also tell you the best place to sit for Old Faithful. You don't want to miss it. Next was the Black Sand Pool, where we could actually hear and feel the earth thump. After that was the Grand Prismatic Spring, which was... Very, very cool. And then we left Yellowstone around 3 p.m. and headed to our campsite. We had a two-hour drive to get there. We stayed at Moose Trail Cardwell RV in Cardwell, Montana. It was $54 for the night and had all the hookups. I highly suggest placing a pickup order at either Target or Walmart. There is both in Helena, Montana, which we will be driving through the next day. You want to make sure you stock up on groceries before you get to Washington because the prices are higher there and they have a lot of recycling fees that we normally don't see. The next morning, we had a six hour drive to Mini Glacier in Glacier National Park. We did stop for a quick lunch on the way and got to Mini Glacier about 4.30 p.m. Mini Glacier is on the east side of the park and is the Swiss Alps of the United States. You can't miss Where it. Where are we? Glacier National Park. Switzerland. Switzerland. We stopped at the ranger station for a stamp and our passports and then did a quick hike to Fisher Cap Lake. Make sure you check out my video on Glacier on where to see a moose. After some hot chocolate on the back porch of Mini Glacier Hotel, we headed out and around the whole park to get over to the other side. Our RV was too big to drive the going to the sun road. We arrived to Fish Creek Campground about 10.30 that night. It was $23 for that night and had no hookups. You have to book this one ahead of time too. We explored Apgar Village before hiking to Avalanche Lake. That was a treat. We left Glacier National Park around 5 p.m. and headed two and a half hours away to our campground in St. Regis, Montana. We stayed at Campground St. Regis for $44 that night and they had all the hookups. That morning we geared up for a 404 mile drive to Seattle. The kids got a little loony in the RV, but we had fun. We tried making minimal stops so that we could get to the market before they closed at five o'clock that night. And we made it despite losing an hour to the time change. We did the gum wall, checked out the market, and even saw the guys in the fish market. They weren't throwing fish because of COVID, but it was still fun to watch. Luckily, we had family in Seattle and friends in Gig Harbor, which is real close. So we were able to spend two days with them and two nights just parked at their house for no charge. The next morning, we got up and had a three hour drive to Astoria, Oregon, where the Goonies was filmed. We saw the Goonies house, the bowling alley where Chunk spilled his milkshake, and the jail where the Fratelli brothers broke out. Next, we had a 20 minute drive to Fort Clatsop, where we got another stamp in our passport and saw where Lewis and Clark made their fort for the winter. And we actually saw a real life shipwreck. Next, we hit up Ecola State Park where the Goonies found their secret treasure. We ended the day at Haystack Rock on Cannon Beach. We stayed the night at Cannon Beach RV, which was $81 for the night and had all of the hookups. The next day, we had a two-hour drive down to Devil's Punch Bowl. That tiny little blue speck is a person. We timed it right so that we were there during low tides so that we could go down and walk around inside Devil's Punch Bowl. That was a hit. It wasn't easy getting down there, but if you watch my video on the Oregon coast, I tell you exactly how to do it. We stopped for lunch in Depot Bay and then went across the street to the Whale Watching Center. Evidently, it's more fun to fight with your brother than to actually watch for whales. After that, we hit up the town of Newport. They had some really funky, cool shops and we really had a blast there. We also got to watch a lady filleting fish and found some really cute seals. And then we just had to get ice cream before we headed back to Devil's Punch Bowl, this time at high tide when it was filled with water and all sloshing around from the waves. Make sure you check your tide charts, and I do tell you all about that in my Oregon Coast video, too. That night, we stayed at Seal Rock's RV, which was right across the street from Seal Rock Beach, and we saw seals on a rock. It was $68 for the night and had all of the hookups. The next morning, we drove 45 minutes down the coast to get to Hasita Head Lighthouse. How was the walk up here? About a mile. And look at the lighthouse. There it is. We finished that day shopping in Florence, Oregon, and then went to Coos Bay where we stayed the night at Sunset Bay State Park. We had all the hookups and it was $41 for the night. The next morning we had a two and a half hour drive down the coast as we entered California and headed towards the Redwoods. Our first stop was the Hayuchi Visitor Center to check out the Redwood National Forest, then to the Trees of Mystery, which had a gondola ride that took you up to the top of the Redwoods and also suspension bridges that you could walk amongst the trees in. Next was one of the trees that you could drive through and then we did a few hikes. I do go into a lot more specific details about all of that in my video on the Redwoods. We then drove to our campsite for the night, which was at Patrick's Point Agate Campground. It was $43 for the night and had no hookups. It did, however, have some amazing hikes that started right there from the campground. We went down to the ocean to see the sunset and that was an amazing adventure. 
The next day we woke up and headed to the Avenue of the Giants, but can we just take a second and realize how big that tree is compared to our RV? Anyway, the Avenue of the Giants is a three hour scenic drive down a road that takes you throughout all kinds of redwoods. It was a beautiful drive and I highly recommend it. From there, we had a two hour drive south down the Pacific Coast Highway to get to Fort Bragg where we went to Sea Glass Beach. My son was in heaven. We searched that beach high and low and found hundreds of pieces of sea glass in every color that God has ever created. That night, we stayed at the coolest spot right on the ocean. It was the Van Damme State Park Beach parking lot. It did cost $45 and had no hookups, but it was so cool being right there by the ocean. That next morning, we had a 150 mile drive south down to Sausalito, California. We fell in love with Sausalito. We spent a relaxing day checking out all the shops, restaurants, getting coffee, just sitting on the boardwalk watching all the sailboats go by. There was a great view of Alcatraz and we found a restaurant with its own private beach. That was great for the kids. In my video about Sausalito in San Francisco, I shared the best photo op spot for the Golden Gate Bridge. We spent the night at a rest area right beside the Golden Gate Bridge. It was free and it was okay to do, but it was a little bit creepy. We might have slept with a hatchet right beside our bed, but we survived. That next morning, we took a lift over to San Francisco. We did park in Sausalito and my San Francisco video will explain exactly why. We went to Fisherman's Wharf and Pier 39 and it was just like the movies. Pier 39 and there's Alcatraz right there, straight across. Whoa. After Fisherman's Wharf, we had tickets to go to Alcatraz, so we walked over there, hopped on the ferry, and got a tour of Alcatraz. We even got to see the cell the men had broken out of. It was one of our highlights of the whole trip. After we got back to San Francisco, we hired another Lyft driver to take us back over to Sausalito. We ended up with another amazing Lyft driver. He actually took us by Lombard Street, the curviest street in the United States. We left San Francisco in late afternoon and had a four hour drive over to Yosemite National Park. We arrived at Yosemite pretty late, but still had to stop for a picture, of course. Just a reminder to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell too, so you'll get notified of all my upcoming travel videos too. We stayed two nights in Lower Pines Campground. Watch my Yosemite video to find out where the best campsite is in all of Yosemite. We may or may not have had it. We are at Yosemite National Park and that's the half field. Oh, I can't wait to see it at night when the sun lights it up. While my husband and sons hiked Vernal Falls, my daughter and I checked out the Iwani Hotel. That's a hotel that the movie The Shining was mimicked after. This is one of the scenes from the movie, and this is what the Iwani looks like now. And these are the famous red elevator doors in the movie, and this is what they look like in the hotel now. And I absolutely bought my daughter this dress, and we recreated the twin scene from the movie too. Back to the non-creepy stuff, we played in the Merced River when it got really hot one day, and also drove over to check out El Capitan. Check out the movie Free Solo if you haven't. The next morning, we found this really cool rock slide and we hiked to the longest waterfall in the United States before leaving the area around noon and heading out of the park. It was about a two hour drive to get to the east exit of the park and that drive was utterly spectacular. We then had a four and a half hour drive to get to Spencer Hot Springs in the middle of the Nevada desert and we got to drive on the loneliest road in America to get there. Spencer Hot Springs is a collection of four or five natural hot springs in the middle of the desert. There's a herd of wild donkeys that live there too so if you're lucky they'll come hang out with you. This was one of our all time favorite nights in our entire road trip. It is BLM land, so it's free to stay on and open to the public. Of course, there's no hookups, but that made it even more fun. The next day, we prepared for a long day of driving with over 400 miles to get to Salt Lake City. We did arrange for a quick grocery pickup in Elko, Nevada, because we are finally out of the states that charged an arm and a leg. We also made a quick stop at the Bonneville Salt Flats. Wow. It's really bright. Yeah? And it's cool. Wow. It looks like ice. This is a must see. This was one of the coolest places I have ever been to on this earth. We made it to Salt Lake City and had a relaxing evening of dinner and then dessert at Hatch Family Chocolates. It was a great time meeting Steve Hatch and chatting with him about his TV show Little Chocolatiers on TLC. We obviously did a lot of driving on this trip and it was hilarious how our kids found things to do to pass their time. We intended to go to the Spiral Jetty this evening, but the current car rental shortage left us without a way to get there. So we got to our campground a little early. Little Valley was $72 for the night and had all the hookups. The next day we had a 45 minute drive to Park City where we went to Utah Olympic Park. That's where the Olympics were held in 2002. Now you can go there and check out all kinds of things. They have rope courses, extreme slides, zip lining, even a bobsled course. We had an absolute blast here. We even got to watch some Olympic athletes train. That was so cool. Afterwards, we went downtown Park City and oh boy, this town is the cutest. It was a ski town and has a ski lift that goes right downtown and had the cutest shops and restaurants and treats too. I highly recommend Park City. 
From there, we had a three-hour drive to Jensen, Utah, where we had our campground for the evening. It was $36 for the night and had all of the hookups. The next day, we had 350 miles to go, but part of that was driving through Rocky Mountain National Park, so it wasn't all that bad. We saw another moose and all kinds of other beautiful scenery as we climbed over 12,000 feet in elevation. As we left Rocky Mountain National Park on the other side, we came upon the Stanley. This is a hotel that Stephen King stayed at when he became inspired to write The Shining, and is also where Dumb and Dumber was filmed. There you go. There you go. We may have had just a little fun recreating some of those scenes. Boulder was cute and quaint and filled with all kinds of street performers, amazing shops, great restaurants, and even more street performers. It was a great place to people watch. That night we stayed in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. It was $48 for the night and had all the hookups. The next day, our last day of exploring, we checked out the Red Rock Amphitheater and oh my word, that is a place you need to see. It was breathtaking. And right across the street from Red Rock was Dinosaur Ridge. Dinosaur Ridge was a really cool place. It had a museum. We actually saw a dinosaur footprint. The kids got to sleuth for gems and we just spent a little time walking around the museum. This last night, we rented a room in a hotel right next to the Denver airport. We got there a little early and spent that time cleaning out our RV and getting it back to Shelly. Have I mentioned how amazing she is? We spent that night at the hotel and then the very next morning we flew back home. One RV, five people, 23 days, and 4,616 miles, and we would do it all over again in a heartbeat. I hope you always remember to choose joy and take all of the pictures.